Hello everyone and welcome to the channel of Venus Flytrap World. In today's video, I would like to share with you how to pop and repop a Venus Flytrap. I'll be sure to be very detailed, especially in the components that I'm using, for you to make sure that you're putting your plant in the correct medium. First, let's go over the components. I have a Venus Flytrap right here. I have my potting medium right here, which I'm about to mix with the water. Uh, for this soil, I use a combination of peat moss with perlite. The only uniqueness about these two components are that the peat moss and the perlite are both pure components. So I didn't buy any type of enriched or fertilized type of materials. These are just pure peat moss and pute, pure uh, perlite. I haven't mixed them yet, but it's about a 4 to 1 ratio. Then right here, we have the water. We'll be using quite a bit of water today. And I have bought some distilled water, which I use always for my Venus fly traps. Just as a general rule of thumb, you always want to use pure water. Therefore, use distilled water, reverse osmosis water, or rain water. In this case, distilled water. I also have a spray bottle to water the plant later today. And also a pot. Generally, for Venus fly traps, you need two, actually three things for the pot. First, you need to choose a material that doesn't leak any type of minerals or any type of components to the soil. So usually the best candidates for these are glazed ceramic and plastic. Also, actually styrofoam cups are a viable third option, which is actually very inexpensive and it also provides the, a good material. Besides the main material of the pot, you also want to consider to get some insulation. Another reason why I'm using this styrofoam cup is that this plant will be placed outside and where I live is extremely hot, so I do want to give it some insulation from the weather. And finally, we want to make sure it has drainage holes. Right now, there is none, but I'll be adding some as we go on. So now, let's get started with the repotting. So, here is the little plant. Like I said, I am kind of unsure of what care they have been given to the plant. I bought it in a hardware store. It's in pretty good state, but I'm not sure if they haven't been watering them at all, or maybe they just use the standard tap water. So eventually it might start getting some mineral burns and I want to prevent that. So the first step is to remove the plant from the old container. I kind of have loosened up the soil a little bit, but I think it's not too bad to remove it as it is. So I'm going to pour some of the soil of the outside. Try to be gentle, but don't get overly worried. These plants are actually very resilient. Just be careful with the roots. So I'm going to take the soil from the exterior. Sometimes I like to moisten it, so add some water to be able to break it up easier. easier. But in this, in this case, it wasn't too bad. You do not have to remove every single piece of soil. If you know that the soil medium was the correct one, which I believe this one is just peat moss, but I do want to take out some of it, so I'll take it out just to inspect the plant and make sure that it is all good and the roots haven't been damaged. So a little bit more right here. It actually looks pretty good. The bulb, the one that is right here, which is kind of yellowish in color or mostly white. Um, if it is those colors, then it is great. The only time where you have to worry is if the bulb is actually turning black or turning brown color, then that means that your plant is rotting and that can actually kill the plant very quickly. So the plant is bare root right now. So let's leave it on the side for a little bit and then we will pot it in just a, in just a second. I'll put it right here. Now let's prepare the soil very quick. So we have the perlite and we have the peat moss right here. There are options for soil mediums, for potting mediums, but in this case I do like to use peat moss and perlite. I think it provides, the perlite provides enough aeration and the peat moss is inert, so it works really, really well for being slide drops. No nutrients. So what I did is I just add some distilled water to moisten the soil. 
I don't want to overly damp it because sometimes it's kind of harder to be able to pot the plant when the soil is completely looking like mud. So I don't want that. At first, this medium will be kind of difficult to mix, but eventually it will give up and it will start just moistening around. Let's see, let's mix a little bit more. your hands if you want to but basically we just want it to be humid but not completely damp. Now it is time to employ the pot. Actually we got gloves but I sometimes forget to use them so let's get it started now so we don't make too much of a mess. Okay all right so let's get some soil in the cup let's make sure that it's humid enough but not be too curved in there. A little tweak there. So we stuff the stuff the soil. Kind of use your fingers to be able to press it around. So it's not extremely compact, but it is secure. All right. I usually like to top it off, or at least be close to the top. So we have that. Now you can use a pen, a sharpie, or whichever long and slim tool you might have around your home and just make a little incision right there. And that's where we will deposit the Venus flytrap. I don't know if you noticed when I first showed the plant, which is right here, the little guy, but it has really long roots and we want them to be as vertical as possible. But now, before we actually insert them and pot them, in this new container, I do want to trim it. Venus flytrap grow very fast and they produce black leaves as the old leaves wither. Sometimes when the plant is already potted, it's kind of difficult to trim them, but now that it's completely bare root, I'm just going to use some scissors and just chop off some of the black leaves that we have around. So that plant will actually look very clean once we set it in the in this new medium. Let's see, we have a couple right here. And now a note about the potting process is, like I said, you can be a bit careful with the plant. Just don't get too worried about handling it. The only part that it's sort of delicate is the bulb, so you don't want to puncture it with your nails. Just make sure you grab it carefully. And also, if you can, I know sometimes it's kind of hard, Make sure that you don't stick your fingers inside the traps. It's not that you kill the plant when you do so, but a Venus flytrap will spend a substantial amount of energy controlling those traps. So if you start like poking them around, then you're just wasting your plant's energy. All right, oh, I think we have one more right here. Let's trim it out. Oh, there's a difficult one here in the center. Let me see if I can, if I can reach it. It's all out, so now it looks all clean. And now we will carefully, carefully insert the roots within the vertical hole that we made. You can use your fingers to guide the roots. And then once the bulb is starting to touch the level of the soil, just push, push some of the soil around until it covers it. The bulb area is actually prone to getting sunburned or just damaged by the sun in some occasions. And you want it to be underground. The top of the bulb, you should be able to see it, but the bottom of it should be covered with soil. Now I'll continue to add the medium. Just make sure you compact it around the sides and make sure the plant is secure. Once you are set, adding all the medium, then your plant is ready. In the case of this pot, I was missing some drainage holes, so I'm going to add some in the bottom. And now, I'll place it right here. Add a little bit of water, 
The soil should already be moist, but if you want it a little bit more to set the soil in, yeah, something like there. I've also placed the plant on top of a water tray. This is how I'll be watering it. I'll be watering it from the bottom to stimulate the growth of the roots and also to prevent root rot. Now, in the next coming weeks, your plant might look a little down due to the repotting. For that reason, you must ensure that you provide enough and good care. So make sure your plant is receiving enough lighting, you make sure your, the soil is always moist, that you only use the distilled water that I mentioned. And in general, just try not to poke it around too much, do not feed it, do not fertilize it, do not do anything extreme during these next few weeks. Just make sure your plant fully recovers before you start feeding it again. If you would like more information about Venus Flytrap Care, I actually have a great article where you can download the whole Venus Flytrap Care Sheet. You can find that information at venusflytrapworld.com care. Make sure to check out the website and maybe you'll find some articles that you find useful. Thank you for much, so much for watching the channel. I appreciate your support. See you next time.